since I got to this district, I, I've been keeping pretty meticulous records and to date from when I first started getting the calls about sheep with vehicle collisions, I believe my latest count, I'm at 343 sheep that I've loaded into a state truck just since I've been here. As a wildlife biologist, to me, it's an awful waste of the resource to lose that many sheep to vehicle collisions. Just in Arizona alone, we've created three new populations that are now huntable, by the way. They've, they're actually offering permits for bighorn sheep in areas that we didn't have any sheep before. It's really exciting now that we are able to take them out of state. These are going to Utah. So if they can start a whole new sheep population or three or five or 10 from this seed stock, that's a golden opportunity that I'm glad we're at least taking advantage of that aspect of it. As we move these sheep from Arizona to Utah, it's, it's a rather unique situation because Antelope Island has been historically a nursery herd since the late 80s for us. So these sheep um, will supplement an existing herd of Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, as I mentioned, that were moved in 2019. We'll utilize that herd to transplant out of and supplement additional herds in Utah or establish new herds in Utah. You know, these are projects that, that might not happen otherwise without the support and funding, and, and that's where Kuyu comes in and has done a really incredible job. And it's not just the funding. I mean, there's a bunch of Kuyu guys here, you know, devoting their time and energy, and that's, that's a huge part of it as well. There's not a lot of people that get to do um, this hands-on stuff. Uh, so for me as a hunter and not necessarily a sheep hunter, just, just a guy that likes to, uh, to see conservation in action, um, for Q to step up and do this kind of stuff, it, it's just amazing, man. As a sheep hunter, um, being able to lay your hands on a ram is something that not many people ever get to do. But to be able to actually put your hands on a live animal and know that you're going to be doing something good with it, whether it's increasing a population in another state or getting them out of an area like this one where they live in town. And I think we've had 343 casualties on, on roads here in Marinci. It, it's just a big deal to make sure you're doing the right thing for these animals. All right, well, day one, we're in Marinci, Arizona. This is a really cool project, it's been a long time coming. We are taking 30 sheep from, uh, from the town of Marinci. Uh, it's a really cool project that basically there's a lot of uh, conflict between these bighorns and cars and houses and stuff. So we're taking 30 sheep out of the town here and we're taking them to Antelope Island, Utah. Obviously we did the first transplant to Antelope Island. Those sheep are doing great. This is gonna be supplement that herd which is gonna create the first uh, Rocky Mountain Bighorn nursery in the West. So super excited, day one. This is a really different operation, the fact that we're gonna be darting these sheep. If we need to catch them with helicopters in two days, they're going to, but we're at, right now we're gonna try and catch 30, driving around, cruising around in town, basically uh, darting sheep. So it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Here. Anyways, we're there. gonna go down around. She just laid down. We're gonna go down and recover her and then take her back to be processed. Historically, you know, Utah's wild sheep program really started in the 80s, and it's 100% based on transplant work. So we've been able to grow populations of wild sheep in Utah from less than 500 animals in the late 70s to almost 5,500 animals, and it's entirely based on transplant work. Having clean source herds is key to our entire sheep program and the future of our sheep program. 
Well, into day two, awesome day. We caught, uh, had a slow day on the first day, second day. There's 13 sheep headed for Antelope Island. They will get there tomorrow sometime around three o'clock, hopefully. Um, they're gonna t test all the blood, make sure it's disease free, and then they're gonna turn them loose. This is kind of the start, tip of the iceberg, if you will. You know, we see a lot of projects going forward. We have a lot of opportunity to work with wild sheep and their habitat and, and water sources, habitat, whatnot. And, you know, hopefully we can continue to grow the herds.